Welcome to the video guide of the Flashy Science Radiation Experiment. On the top left of the screen you'll see a Geiger Muller tube for detecting radiation. This is connected to this meter which shows the signal from the Geiger Muller tube. This mount assembly is used to hold radioactive sources and absorptive filters. The mount is on this centimeter scale ruler. At the bottom right there is an electronic clock and calendar. To turn on the meter simply click on this switch and you'll see the power light goes green and the needle shows the live signal from the Geiger Muller tube. To add a radioactive source, click on this region of the mount assembly. This moves you to a new screen where there are six different radioactive sources available. Each emits different types of radiation or a different balance of the different types of radiation. I'm going to click on cadmium 109 which emits gamma radiation. The source is then in the sample holder at the top of the screen and a green and white confirm button appears in the top left of the screen. If I click on the confirm button then the source is moved to the main screen and the signal on the Geiger Muller tube meter has now increased. I can increase the separation between the source and the detector by first clicking on this region of the sample mount. With the mouse button held down you will see a zoomed view of the ruler. Now if I drag the mount sideways, you'll see that the signal also changes, decreasing as the separation between the radioactive source and the Geiger Muller tube increases. I'm going to leave it here at about 8 centimetres, and you'll see there's a signal now of about 40 counts per second, although there's a little bit of movement in the needle due to natural variation in the radioactivity emitted, plus some background radiation. We can explore the effect of different filter materials by clicking on this region of the mount assembly that holds the filters. This moves us to a new screen that shows us four different filter materials, paper, aluminium, lead and water. Each of these absorbs alpha, beta and gamma radiation differently. To add these, simply click on the material of choice. Let's start with paper. You'll see that the other materials disappear and we have one millimetre of the chosen material in the holder. The thickness is shown on the increments inside the holder. We can add more layers of paper, each one millimetre thick, and shown on the scale of the holder, up to 15 millimetres. If we want to decrease the thickness, we simply click on the material that's in the filter holder until it's all disappeared and we return to the original four choices. Now I'm going to add a few millimetres of lead and then return to the main screen with this in place by clicking on the green and white confirm button in the top left of the screen. There we are. And you'll see now that the signal has decreased from about 40 to about 30 counts per second with the thickness of lead we've introduced. Finally, we can also time travel with this experiment. You may be aware that radioactive decay has a half-life, which is to say that the radioactive decay of elements reduces over time and has a characteristic time over which the emission halves. This is the half-life. To explore this, we can go forward in time to look at what the future signal will be. We can use the clock and calendar to do this. So click on any of the units shown here to go forward in time by that unit. So for instance, I can click on minutes, to move forward in minutes, although this doesn't have much effect on the signal. Hours, again this doesn't affect the signal noticeably. So I can move forward in days, again not seeing an appreciable difference. So I can move forward in terms of months and now this starts to decrease the radioactive signal. Finally, if I click on years, the signal decreases more rapidly. The experiment also has additional functionality that you can access via this icon in the top left of the screen. This opens a menu with five more icons. The first icon simply closes the menu again. The second icon returns you to the experiment when you're on a question screen. We'll come to those shortly. The third is the click information icon. Selecting this will highlight all of the areas on the screen that can be clicked to control the experiment. The fourth icon opens up a screen on questions directly related to the experiments you might have just performed. The final icon opens up revision questions that cover the area of radioactivity more generally. 
All questions are answered automatically and many contain randomly generated numbers, so you can retake them as many times as you like for practice. You can use this experiment to look at the radioactive half-life of different elements to look at the effect of distance between radioactive sources and the detector and the effect of using different materials as absorbers of different types of radiation. So there's lots to do and we hope you enjoy using this flashy science experiment.